live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering OpenStack Summit 2017. Brought to you by the OpenStack Foundation, Red Hat, and additional ecosystem support. And we're back. I'm Stu Miniman, joined by my co-host John Troyer. Help and welcome, well, happy to welcome to the program uh, two of the keynote speakers this morning. Uh, worked on some of the container activity. Uh, Kendall Nelson, who's a upstream developer advocate with the OpenStack Foundation, yep. and John Griffith, who's a principal engineer from Net Net NetApp, excuse me, through the SolidFire acquisition. Thank you so much both for joining. Yeah, thank thanks you. for having us. See, see yeah. we have any slip-ups when we're live? We just run through it. <laughs> Kendall, you ever heard of something like that happening? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that might have happened this morning a little bit. <laughs> uh, so, you know, let, let, let's start with the keynote this morning. Mm -hmm. I, I tell you, we were pretty impressed with, with, with the demos. Sometimes the demo gods don't always uh, live up to expectations. Uh, yeah. But maybe share with our little um, with our audience just a little bit about kind of kind of the goals, what you were looking to accomplish. Yeah, sure. So basically, what we set out to do was once the ironic nodes were spun up, we wanted to set up a standalone Cinder service and use Docker Compose to do that, so that we could do an example of creating a volume and then attaching it to a local instance and kind of showing the multiple backend capabilities of Cinder. So. Yeah, so the, the, the idea was um, to show how easy it is to uh, deploy Cinder, right? And, so, and then plug that into that Kubernetes deployment using a flex volume plugin and yeah. voila. I, I, it was funny, I saw, I saw some comments on Twitter that were like, well, we're, maybe we're showing you know, management that it's not you know, a wizard that you just <laughs> click, click, click and yeah. everything's done. Yeah. Um, there is some complexity here. You do want to have some people that know what they're doing because uh, right. you know, things can, can break. Um, I, I, I love that the you know container stuff was called ironic. It, well, the bare metal was called ironic because yeah. right when when you think OpenStack at first, it was like oh this is virtualized infrastructure, and therefore when containers first came out, it was like wait it's shifting, it's going away from virtualization. You know you've been on Cinder, you helped start Cinder, right. uh, so maybe you can give us a little bit about you know historical view as to where that came from and where it's going. You know? Yeah, it's kind of interesting because it. it you're absolutely right. There was, you know, a point where in the beginning where it was virtualization was everything, right? Um, ironic, actually, I, I think it really started more of a, a means to an end to figure out a better way to deploy OpenStack. Um, and then what happened was is people started to realize, oh, hey, wait, you know, this whole bare metal thing uh, and running these cloud services on bare metal and bare metal clouds, this is a really cool thing. There's there's a lot of merit here. So then it kind of grew and took on its own thing after that. So. Um, it's pretty cool. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of options, a lot of choices, a lot of different ways to run a cloud now. So, yeah. You, you want to comment on that, Kendall? Oh or? no, just there there are definitely tons of ways you can run a cloud, and open infrastructure is really interesting. Growing. That that has been one thing that we've noticed here at the show. So my first summit. So mm -hmm. it was oh. really interesting to me as an outsider, right, trying to perceive the shape of OpenStack. Mm -hmm. Right here, the message has actually been very clear. Uh, we're no longer having to have a one winner, you know, one size fits all kind of cloud world. Like we, we, we exactly. had that fight a couple of years ago. It's clear there's going to be multiple clouds and multiple places and multiple form factors. And it was very nice uh, people and acknowledgement of the ecosystem that there's a whole open source ecosystem of containers and of other open source projects all of, that have grown up all around OpenStack. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I want to talk about a little bit about the, um, and the fact that you know containers and Kubernetes and that app layer is actually doesn't concern itself with a, with the infrastructure so much. So actually, is a great fit for sitting on top of of or you know and adjacent to OpenStack. Can you all talk a little bit about the perception here that you see with the with the end users and cloud builders that are here at the show and how are are they starting to use containers? Or do, do they understand the way these two uh, things fit together? Yeah, I think that we had a lot of uh, talks submitted that were focused on containers, and I was just standing outside the room trying to get into a Women of OpenStack event, and like the number of people that came pouring out that were interested in, in the container stack was amazing, and I definitely think people are getting more into that, and using it with OpenStack is a, a growing like direction in the community. There are a couple new projects that are growing that are containers focused, like um, one just came into the uh, projects OpenStack Helm, and that's a uh, AT&T effort to use. I, I think it's Kubernetes with OpenStack. So, yeah, tons. So it's yeah, it, it's interesting. I, I think the last uh, couple of years there's been a, a huge uptick in the interest of containers, and not just in containers, of course, but 
actually bringing those together with OpenStack and, and actually running containers on OpenStack as the infrastructure. Because to your point, uh, what everybody wants to see basically is commoditized, automated, and generic infrastructure, right? And, and OpenStack does a really good job of that. Um, and as people um, start to kind of realize that OpenStack isn't as hard and scary as it used to be, because uh, for a few years there it was pretty difficult and scary. Um, it's gotten a lot better. Um, so deployment, maintaining, stuff like that, it's not so bad. So it's actually a really good solution to, to build containers on. Well, in fact, I mean, OpenStack, has that history, right? So you've been solving a lot of problems. Right now in the container world, both on the Docker side and uh, Kubernetes as well, you're dealing with storage drivers, yep. networking right. overlays, mm -hmm. um, multi-tenancy, security, all those things that um, you know previous generations of technology have had to solve. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I mean, you know, right now I'd say storage and storage interfaces actually are one of the one of the interesting challenges that the, that Docker and and Kubernetes and all the, all the that that level of containers and container orchestration is facing. Yeah. I mean, it seems like has has OpenStack already solved in some ways already solved some of these problems with with things like Cinder. Absolutely. And, and the, yeah. possibly, is there an application to to containers directly? Absolutely. I mean, I think you know the the thing about all of this and and there's a number of us from the OpenStack community on the Cinder side as well as the networking side too because that's another one of the those problem spaces um, that are actually taking active roles and participating in the Kubernetes communities and the Docker communities um, to try and kind of help with, with solving the problems over on that side, right, and moving forward. Um, the, the fact is, is, you know, storage is, it's kind of boring, but it's hard. Um, oh, everybody sure, thinks it's not boring. Yeah. Jesus, it's really yeah. awesomely hard. Yeah. <laughs> everybody thinks it's, oh, I'll just do my own. It's actually a, a hard thing to get right, and you learn a lot over the last you know, seven years of OpenStack. Yeah. Um, we're, we've learned a lot in production, um, and I think there's a lot to be uh, learned from what we've done and, and how things could be going forward with other projects and new technologies to kind of learn from those lessons and, and make them better. So. Yeah. In terms of a multi-cloud, hybrid cloud world that we're seeing, right? What do you see as the role of OpenStack in, in that kind of a multi-cloud deployment stuff? OpenStack can be used in a lot of different ways. It can be on top of containers or in containers. You can orchestrate cont containers with uh, OpenStack. That's like uh, the depending on the the use case, you can plug and play a lot of different parts of it. On all the projects, we're trying to move to like standalone sort of services so that you can use them more easily with other uh, technologies. Well, in part of your, your demo this morning, you were, you were pulling out of a containerized uh, repo somehow. So is that kind of a path forward for for the the mainline OpenStack uh, core? core? Yeah. So I, I personally, I, I think it would be a, a pretty cool way to go forward, right? Mm -hmm. um, it would make things uh, a lot easier, a lot simpler. And kind of to your point about hybrid cloud, um, the thing that's interesting is, you know, people have been talking about hybrid cloud for a long time. Um, what's most interesting these days, though, is containers and, and things like Kubernetes and stuff, they're actually making hybrid cloud something that's really feasible and possible, right? Mm -hmm. Because now, if I'm running on a cloud provider, whether it's OpenStack, Amazon, Google, mm -hmm. um, DigitalOcean, it doesn't matter anymore, right? Because all of that stuff in my app is encapsulated in a container. So mm -hmm. hybrid cloud might actually become a reality, right? The one thing that's <laughs> missing still is data, <laughs> right? Data gravity and that whole thing. So mm -hmm. if we can figure that out, um, We've, we've actually got something, I think. I, yeah. Interesting comment. I, you know, hybrid cloud reality. I mean, we know the public cloud's here. It, it, yep. It's real. Mm -hmm. um, with, with the Kubernetes piece, doesn't that kind of pull together some, it really enables some of that hybrid strategy for mm -hmm. OpenStack, which, you know, I felt like two or three years ago, it was like, no, 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 don't do public cloud. Yeah. It's expensive and <laughs> hard or something. And yeah, infrastructure's easy and free, right? Uh, <laughs> wait, no, I, I think I missed that uh, somewhere. But um, yeah, it, it, it feels like, you know, you're, you're right at the space that enables uh, so some of those hybrid, you know, and multi-cloud capabilities. Yeah. Well, and, and the thing that's interesting is if you, if you look at things like Swarm and Kubernetes and stuff like that, right? One of the first things that they all build are uh, cloud provider or you know cloud providers, whether OpenStack, AWS, they're all in there, right? So for Swarm, it's it's pretty awesome. I did some, a demo about a year ago um, of using Amazon and using OpenStack, right? And running the exact same workloads, the exact same way with the exact same tools, all from 
uh, Docker machine and Swarm, right? It was, it was fantastic. And now you can do that with Kubernetes. I mean, now that's just, there's nothing impressive. It's just normal, right? That's what you do. <laughs> I, I love the demos this morning because they actually were, they were CLI, they were command line driven, right? Yeah. I yeah. felt uh, at some conferences you see kind of wizards and GUIs and things like that, but here they, yeah. they blew up the terminal and you were typing. I looked like you were actually typing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she was. <laughs> um, and I actually liked the other demo that went on this morning too, where they, they uh, the interrupt demo, right? They mm -hmm. spun up 15 different OpenStack yeah. clouds from different providers on the fly, right there, yeah. and then hooked uh, hooked up a, a cockroach DB, a, a huge cluster with all of them, right? Yeah. Uh, can you maybe talk? Of, I, I just described it. Maybe talk a little bit about that. That seemed uh, that seemed actually super cool. That that and and surprising that that would happen. Uh, that you, you could script all that. That it could happen in real time on stage. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you like noticed, but after our little flub up, uh, <laughs> some of the people during the interop challenge, they would like raise their hand like, oh yeah, I'm ready. And then there were some people that didn't raise their hands like, I'm sure things went wrong and <laughs> with other people too. So it was kind of interesting to see that it's it's really happening. There are people succeeding and, and not quite getting there and it, it definitely is all on the fly for sure. Well, we, we talked yesterday to uh, uh, CTO uh, Red Hat um, and he was talking, saying, saying no, it's simpler but you're still making a complicated distributed computing system. Oh, definitely. Right, there are a lot of, this is not a, there are a lot of moving parts here. Yeah. Uh, it's funny, because I've been around for a while, right? So I remember what it was like to actually build these things on your own, <laughs> right? And uh, this is this is way better. <laughs> okay. So, so it it's, gets your seal of approval. We have we have reached a point yeah, of, uh, of I mean, usability and yeah. maintainability. Yeah, and it's just going to keep getting better, right? Um, you know, like the interop challenge, the thing that's awesome there is, so they use Ansible and they talk to 20 different clouds and yeah. and it works. I mean, it's awesome. It's great. Yeah. Um, so, so I guess I'm hearing containers didn't kill OpenStack. As a matter of fact, it might enable the next generation yeah. uh, of what's going on. So yeah. how about serverless? When do we get to see that in here? I actually was looking real quick. At there, there's a functions as a service uh, session that somebody's doing, but uh, any commentary as to where, where that fits into OpenStack? Uh. So I, I'm kind of I'm kind of mixed on the on the serverless stuff, um, especially in a. In a public cloud, I get it because then I just call it somebody else's server, right? Yeah. Um, in a in a private context, it's it's something that I haven't really quite wrapped my head around yet. I I think it's going to happen. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Um, I just don't know exactly what that looks like for me. I'm I'm more interested right now in figuring out how to do awesome storage in things like Kubernetes and stuff like that. Um, and then once we get past that, then I'll start thinking about yeah. serverless. Because yeah. where where I guess I see is at like an IoT edge use case where I'm leveraging a container architecture that's serverless driven, that's yeah. where it, it kind of fits and sometimes that seems to be an extension of the public cloud uh, rather than, you know, it's the edge of the public cloud rather than, you know, the data center uh, yeah. driven, but uh, so, yeah. Well, that's kind of interesting actually because in, in that context, I do have some experience with some folks that are, are deploying that model now and what they're doing is they're doing a mini OpenStack deployment on the edge yep. Um, and using, you know, Cinder and an instance and everything else, and then pushing, and as soon as they've pushed that out to the public, they destroy what they had and they start over, right? And so it's really, it's actually really interesting. Um, and the economics, depending on the scale and everything else, you start adding it up, it's phenomenal, so. Well, you two are both plugged into the, the user community, the hands-on community. What's, what's the mood of the community this year? Like I said, my first year, Everybody seems engaged. I've, I've just run in randomly to people that are spinning up their first clouds right now in 2017. So it seems like uh, you know there's a lot of people here for the first time excited to get started. Uh, you know, what do you think the mood of the user community is like? Uh, I think it's pretty good. I actually, so at the beginning of the week, I helped to run the OpenStack Upstream Institute, which is teaching people how to contribute to the Upstream community. And there, there were a fair amount of users there. There are normally a lot of operators and then just a set of devs. And it seemed like there were a lot more operators and, and users looking that weren't originally interested in contributing upstream that are now looking into those things. And um, like at our, we had a presence at DockerCon actually, we had a booth there and there were a ton of users that were coming and talking to us and like, how can I use OpenStack with containers? So it's like getting more interest with every day and growing rapidly, so yeah.
All right. Well, I want to thank both of you for, for joining us. I think this went flawless uh, on the interview. And uh, yeah, th th thanks so much. Uh, all, all these things happen. Uh, live is forgiving, as we see on theCUBE and, and absolutely going forward. So thanks so much for joining us. Uh, John and I will be back with more coverage here from the OpenStack Summit in Boston. You're watching theCUBE.